talk a little bit about these protests, the rallies that have been taking place across the country. Some have been more protests, others have been more rallies. Yesterday, I had a column for Colorado Politics, which is an outlet here in Colorado that I publish a biweekly column in. And in Colorado Politics, I argued that Colorado should indeed start reopening as Governor Jared Polis has said he would like to do beginning this coming Sunday. I said he should hold to his pledge, and it looks like he's doing that slowly but surely. However, there are a lot of other states that are cracking down that are not opening up or giving indications that they intend to open up anytime soon. And these rallies and protests that have been gathering across the country have caught the ire of the left. The left which thinks that they know better and that they should be judging what Americans decide they should or should not protest or gather together for. I will say this. I think it would be hoove protesters and rally goers across the country to practice social distancing. I think that at a minimum you send the right image and you show that yes you can be trusted by the government which would trust you the people anyway but you can be trusted by the government to at least observe some basic requests from the government if they're opening. By practicing social distancing at these rallies and protests you demonstrate that you get it and you will take it seriously and yes government, you can get off our backs, unleash us, and we will be responsible ourselves. But there are many in the liberal media, as I've said, who are not taking too kindly to these protests and rally goers. I want to go to a couple of different guests on MSNBC. Let's start in cut two here. This is Dave Zirin, who is the sports editor for the left-wing outlet The Nation. And let's be clear that Dave Zirin should absolutely just stick to sports. But here is Dave. I think this is Sunday morning on AM Joy on MSNBC saying something about those rally goers. It would almost be sort of more direct and open to just go out and chant, let us infect you. Let us infect you. Because that's what they're saying. They're saying we're in a bunch. We're not social distancing. We could be passing this virus around just among us right here. Now let us come back to work and infect y'all. It, it, it's a strange sort of civil rights-ish movement, if that's what they think it is. But it, it also seems to extend, and you were writing about this this week, Dave, to let us have WWE because WWE is an essential business <laughs> because people can't watch sports. Yeah. No, they've gone from all lives matter to no lives matter. Uh, these folks are, let's be honest about what they are. They are the Fox News Nazi Confederate death cult rump of the Republican Party. And their very existence is a slap in the face, not only to the health care workers on the front lines risking their lives every single day, but it's also a slap into the face of the people who are actually dying from this virus in disproportionate numbers, black and brown people. These aren't economically disenfranchised folks. These are small business owners. These are retirees. These are people who want their workers to be sent back to work, not themselves. It's a complete and utter farce. It's an astroturf farce. And also, I think it needs to be said, it's also unrepresentative of the Republican Party as a whole. I just saw a poll that said 70% of Republicans want a national stay-at-home order. So this represents nothing except the narrow astroturf interests and the hard racist interests that combine and form the modern-day Republican Party. Uh, so I'm a little confused because he talked about Republicans in two different ways, saying Republicans would like a nationwide shutdown, which I do not buy at all, and Republicans are racist and hateful, and this is the modern Republican Party, and they want people to die. I mean, that is stunning to hear that kind of language go unrefuted on MSNBC. Not surprising, but stunning. They've went from all lives matter to no lives matter, he says. What was it, neo-Nazi Confederate death cult or something like that? Seriously, people. Where do these experts, these politicos, these talking heads get off thinking that they can suggest that people who are gathering together to express that they're frustrated, they are frustrated, they find that their rights are under attack. They find that their job opportunities are being destroyed and that their livelihoods are getting decimated. 
and they don't feel listened to by politicians who are saying, oh, you just have to wait this out. Or people on MSNBC who are just saying, oh, you have to wait. What was it Zeke Emanuel said? 18 months until we finally open up. And you must trust the all-knowing, all-powerful, kind and compassionate federal government to provide for you. This is hateful stuff, and it is false, and it is incendiary. Now let's go to cut three. Also on MSNBC, this is Philip Rucker from the Washington Post. And what he had to say about rally goers, and in particular, President Trump's defense of them. And then the other thing that the president sees when he looks at images of these protesters like the ones playing right now is he sees his own campaign banner. Uh, he knows that these are his supporters. They may not all be his supporters. We're not sure who they all uh, are going to vote for in November. But many of them uh, are Trump supporters, uh, are waving Trump flag. And Trump, the president, uh, knows that he needs to show some solidarity with them. It's one of the reasons why, for example, after uh, the Charlottesville uh, attack. He showed solidarity with the neo-Nazi protesters there. Uh, in this case, he's trying to show solidarity with these folks, saying, I stand with you. Uh, I believe in what you believe in, which is getting back to work and reopening this economy. And he, he has defended their right to protest, which is in direct violation uh, of the social distancing guidelines that his own administration has put out. He also, by the way, has said that when he looks at images of these protests, that they're definitely more than six feet apart. Uh, we're looking at images of them tonight. They don't look like they're six feet apart. They look a lot closer than that. Uh, but I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. Now, I already addressed before how I think that rally goers, protesters really should make a point of practicing social distancing, both because it's a good guideline to practice anyway, but also because it sends the right message to the powers that be that, yes, you can trust we the people to be responsible if you start opening things up. But here you have another guy on MSNBC trying to insinuate a comparison with this narrative from Charlottesville. Now, if you remember President Trump, what he had said was a little more nuanced, believe it or not, than what they claim about Charlottesville. But we did see a lot of racists and others that had gotten out to do a protest or whatever in Charlottesville. And so what he's trying to do is imply that the protesters, rally goers who are saying, look, the data isn't supporting these long-standing, never-ending, intrusive, and harmful shutdowns any longer, in a lot of these states at least. The data doesn't justify it. So we're going to get out there and we're going to protest for our rights, for the economy, and say, start opening things up. That doesn't mean that everybody wants a switch just flipped or that society is going to suddenly say, yeah, let's go to bars. Let's go gather tens of thousands of people at a football game and enjoy the Broncos or the Giants or whatever. Or you're talking about baseball and gathering together. People will make decisions for their own health and welfare as to where they want to go, where they don't want to go, how healthy they are. It's kind of been ingrained in us now to take more precautions after a month or more of this kind of shutdown. So I think there are a couple of things going on here. One, as you could see in both of those clips, they're basically trying to say that anybody who's a rally goer, they're not just trying to say it, they're saying it. Anybody who is a rally goer, a protester of these policies that are oftentimes draconian policies, or they're arguing that, yes, you should follow through, like in Colorado with your pledge to reopen the state, that those rally goers and protesters are racist bigots, hateful people, neo-Nazis. That's one thing they're trying to do. The other is they're trying to discredit protesters as universally ignorant and universally uncaring about human life, which is just fundamentally wrong, especially when you consider that the economic strife that we are seeing is the result of the government. You know, that David Zirin was talking about how you know, these people who are protesters are not struggling economically. Who the hell does he think he is? 
small business owners, sneering at small business owners. Small business owners pour their heart and soul into their business, pour everything into their businesses and their people who work for them. And if you cannot operate your business for months, as these left-wingers are suggesting must be done, then you cannot keep your life's work alive. You cannot fulfill what you have been centering your life around, which is to build something. Remember Barack Obama said you didn't build that? That's clearly the mindset of a Dave Zirin who thinks, no, these small business owners, they're not building. They can just come back in three, four, five months and pick up the pieces and they'll be okay. Now, he didn't literally say that, but that seems to be the implication. And it is nonsensical. And it is fundamentally wrong, especially that an MSNBC would carry drivel like this. Again, I think that the protesters, rally goers, need to be strategic in how they make their cases and how they present the argument that reopening should happen and how that should be done and gathering together and making sure you're establishing social distancing parameters and holding true to those. But if you want to gather together, your right to protest is fundamental in the Constitution. And you do need to be able to speak your mind so these politicians will hear. So it's not cut and dry either way. But this idea of the leftist media elite sneering at average everyday Americans who are suffering right now and expressing that frustration and suffering to politicians, and they want to sneer at them? Something fundamentally wrong with that. Thanks for watching this clip of Jimmy at the Crossroads. Don't miss more engaging, intelligent talk. Subscribe today to the Jimmy at the Crossroads YouTube channel. You do not want to miss our live show. Thanks for your support. I got Jimmy at the Crossroads Making sense out of no one No sense Yeah. <laughs>